want to play a deck that gives you a solid board presence? Do you want to play a deck that lets you pretend to play cards from other classes like Warlock? They've got Cho'Gal there. Do you want to play a deck that has really good recovery mechanics because even when your board is cleared and it looks bad, your deck, well... Yeah, nice input there from Cho'Gal. Your deck can still come back and it can win in a number of different ways. So, if that's the kind of deck that you're interested in, well, do consider this mid-range shaman deck, uh, and I call it the mid-range shaman claws deck, uh, which I sort of stole from somebody, I think, on Reddit. Uh, I stole it from somewhere, but it's a really good deck, and... Um, what have you got? You've got some really good early game there with the Argent Squire, which you usually want to combo with uh, cards like Flame Tongue Totem. Uh, you've got board clears via Hex in this deck. Well, I say board clear, it, it removes a big minion in essence. You've got cards like Maelstrom Portal, where if you've got a spell damage totem, that's pretty awesome. Um, as a Drake, which gives you spell damage and card draw, uh, but a very interesting card in this deck, Spirit Claws, which is a 1-3 weapon for one cost, so yeah, it's not too bad, but it gets plus two attack if you have spell damage on board, uh, either with the As a Drake or your spell damage totem, which is pretty nice, so pretty good weapon there. And of course, to finish things off, you have Alec here, the Wind Lord, who synergizes very well with Flame Tongue Totem. Uh, you have Thing From Below, Fire Elemental, which are, which are pretty big, and of course Thunder Bluff Valiant, only one copy uh, to help buff up your totems. And uh, yeah, so let's have a look at this deck in action, and let's see how we go. Your soul shall be mine. Okay, so going up against a Warlock um, on the standard mode ladder. And here you just keep the Argent Squire. Uh, it's a really, really good one drop, particularly against Zulok trades very well with uh, low health minions that the Zulok can play. Now particularly if you can get a Flame Tongue Totem to go with it. Okay, that's not too bad. Uh, Master Revolution is in this deck too and that could do some pretty interesting things. In the clip that you saw at the beginning of the video I was able to get Cho'Gal. Uh, not that he did anything for me, but he was a, a big body on board that I could use, so that's pretty good. And there's Spirit Claws, now that's interesting, I have uh, Blood Mage Thalmos in hand. Uh, can't play both of them, if this was turn 3, yes I could. And I'd be able to get rid of the, the Flame Imp in one go, but alas, no, short of one mana, really unfortunate, but hey, it's okay. Okay, so this looks like a Zulok on initial impressions. So do we play Thalmos here and take that out in one go? I think we do. So we are sacrificing, uh, we, we, we're not sacrificing, sorry, we are floating one mana there. But I think it was worth it. I think it was worth it. It was fine. Tonight, oh, bombs, really? And Earthring, Earthen Ring Farseer? Okay, this is not Zulok. This is something completely different. Uh, my money then is on Reno Lock, potentially, which could make this match quite challenging. Because when you think you've won, they play Reno. Okay, uh, I'm going to keep Thalmos on board, and yet yeah, Maelstrom Portal, that's why I want to keep Thalmos alive um, as much as I can. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is Reno Lock then. This is Reno Lock. As a Drake on Curve is pretty good. Um. There, there would be no argument for playing Thunder Bluff Valiant here. So, as a trade. 
Okay, Tuscata Town looks pretty good. Um, three costs three two that summons a totem. And you usually hope for it to summon a totem golem, or, or a manatee totem, or a flame tongue totem. Oh, speaking of totem golem, there it is. We're six mana here. Um, and that is a harvest golem. Hmm, interesting. Now, we could just ignore that. I mean, there's a, there is a death rattle associated with that card. So, Tuscata Tamit gives, oh, yay, brilliant. Gives us a totem golem, and then we just put another one down. We go face. Now, it's in instances like this that you just feel you're going to get punished. And yep, I am getting absolutely punished here. Shadow Flame, yeah. I overcommitted to that ball, which was a mistake. I shouldn't have played so many minions. I mean, I saw the Hellfire and I thought, yeah, I'm safe, but. No, it was a mistake on my part. And now we're in trouble. But well, we're not in that much princess. trouble. I mean, we have two minions on board, but we invested so much on that previous turn, and we got punished for it. That's really unfortunate. Okay. So, next turn, Flame Tongue Totem, Maelstrom Portal. Uh, yeah, that'll clear the 3-5. Oh, that's pretty good. Think from below. Hmm. So, do we just... Do we, do we just play Thunder Bluff here? Uh, there is a lot at stake. Yeah, sure. Oh, I was hoping for a... I was hoping for maybe a Taunt Totem. But it's okay, because we have a thing from below. Now, I'm throwing out the Thunder Bluff in a bit of a reckless ma- Oh my god, yeah. In a bit of a reckless manner, and once again, I get punished. I get absolutely punished for committing. However, on reflection, maybe this is the kind of thing I need to do. Why? Because we've seen Hellfire, we've seen Shadow Flame, we've seen Twisting Nether. And now we're paving. We're okay, fine. Whatever. Don't care. We are paving the way for Alakir uh, and the, that flame tongue totem. But of course, he had Reno. So my hopes of a uh, an early victory are now dashed. Uh, really unfortunate. But I don't care because um, we can deal with Reno. Um, and now we just push. We stick to that initial strategy of commit and push, commit and push, commit and push. How is he going to get through Alakir? I mean, unless he's got Siphon Soul, which he may very well have. Uh, Alakir will not be easy for him to get through. He'll have to commit to break the shield. And we keep the pressure on. I have no time for games. Oh dear. Okay, that's a problem. <laughs> that is a real problem. Um, hmm. It's a shame that Alakir doesn't have four attack. Uh, okay. Hmm, that's good, but... Sylvanas. Wow. There's a number of different things I could do here. There really is. Um, but I'm not going to do any of them. I'm just going to push. And win. <laughs> yeah. And that was lethal, which I missed initially and then picked up afterwards. So yeah, Spirit Cause Shaman. Yeah, a good deck, solid deck. And it's one of those decks that's going through an experimental phase at the minute. People are trying Spirit Claws and looking at what they think. Uh, at worst, it's a 1-3 weapon. One attack, three, uh, a three durability weapon. Um, at best, it combos with Rock Biter to clear something on the board, uh, and it combos with your spell damage effects to get um, a bit more attack power on. So, yeah, uh, not a bad deck at all. Is this better than the traditional Totem Shaman that I used to play, which had two Thunder Bluffs? I'm not so sure. Is it better than Aggro Shaman? Well, I beat a couple of Aggro Shamans with this deck, because we have Lightning Storm, we have Maelstrom Portal, we have Spirit Claws to clear early things. Um, 
But I also got beat by a couple of Agra Shamans too, so uh, we'll call it 50-50. Uh, so yeah, really interesting deck to try, and I think it's one that I'm going to keep trying on the ladder as time goes on. So, thank you very much for joining me everyone. Do check out that YouTube channel, my YouTube channel, sorry. Do hit the subscribe button, I'd really appreciate it. And I'll see you all again very, very soon.